101st time tuning in, we welcome you. Now is a great time to like this video, comment, let us know that you're here, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now let's get to today's message from Pastor Cannon. We hope you enjoy. I do want to call to your attention this passage from Proverbs, reading to you verses 5 and 6 from the King James Version, um, the way you, as they say, memorized it in Sunday school. For the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Amen. Amen. And amen. And with the aid of the Holy Spirit this Sunday morning, I invite you to join with me with your encouragement as we preach the last installment of our series on habits. And today we want to preach on trusting your habit to God. Yes. Trusting your habit to God. Smile at your neighbor right now and says, neighbor, yes. oh neighbor, oh, you got to trust him. Yes. Amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Back in the late 60s and early 70s, as I was growing up as a little boy in Kannapolis, I loved to watch y'all, the telephone man, drive into our neighborhood. For the telephone man, y'all would park his truck, strap on his gear, and go to work on top of the telephone pole. For he was like a superhero to me, my friends, like Superman, because he could climb up on that telephone pole without the aid of a ladder or the use of a cherry picker or none of those other things. This telephone man had magical powers. He just seemed to be good at hustling up and down that thing, seemingly with little to no effort. And one day, y'all, I got the chance to talk to the telephone man, and I was trying to find out how he managed uh, to go up and down that pole so easily. And he explained to me, Pastor Bruce, that first of all, his shoes had spikes in them. He said the spikes allowed him to, to implant his feet into the pole and get some grips as he climbed the pole. And secondly, he explained, Brother L, that climbing the pole, he, he made a point to rest against his belt uh, so that he could firmly implant his shoes into the pole. The telephone man, y'all, admitted that as a young repair man, he really didn't know how to do it. Uh, nor did he trust his belt. Instead of resting on his belt, he would slide down the pole, and as a result of that, he got quite a few splinters in his body. And I want to pause right there just for a little bit this morning and just connect the dots if I could and possibly draw some parallels that, that there may be one or two of us in church this morning, one or two of us watching on YouTube or Facebook uh, that, that, that can, can say beyond the shadow of a doubt that, that because we thought we were more than what we really were and because we, 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 we thought we were better than what we really are, are some of us got more splinters in our lives than we should have. Let me say it like this. 
And if the truth be told, some of us right now keep on getting splinters in our lives because of our hard-headedness, but we won't just do the right thing. And when I say splinters, I'm talking about those things that keep sticking us that we can't get over. When I say splinters, I'm talking about uh, uh, those things that keep jabbing us, uh, then we can't get around them. When I say splinters, I'm talking about people that tease and people that take. I'm talking about splinters, people who talk smack and can't back it up. When I talk about splinters, I'm talking about systems that are known, y'all, my friends, an old bait and switch. When I say splinters, I'm talking about people that smile in your face all the time to want to take your place. Come on, OJs, backstabbers. Church, hear, hear me what I'm saying this morning because it, 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 it's, it's our rejection of the truth. It, it's our stubbornness to change. It's, it's our unwillingness to let bygones be bygones. And because we have that kind of cantankerous spirit inside of us, y'all, many of us will continue to get splinters in our spirit and splinters in our souls instead of us learning to do what God says do. What does God say do? God says trust me. What does God say do? God says follow me. What does God say do? God says I will be with you. You've got to trust the process. Say trust the process. Let me see if I can illustrate this to you. Don't know if you know the name of Mandy Hale. Mandy Hale, y'all, is the author of a book entitled You Are Enough and the creator of, uh, of a movement called the Single Women's Movement. Miss, Miss Denise, she is a social media uh, uh, writer who, who basically rewrote the rule book against singleness and she challenges every woman to see that she is sufficient, she is accepted acceptable, and she is complete. Now, don't miss those words. Uh, sufficient, acceptable, and complete. Can you say that? Sufficient, acceptable, and, okay, you're not getting it. Can I just ask all the ladies in the house, can you say sufficient, acceptable, and complete? Go. Sufficient, acceptable, and complete. Oh, come on. I think you can do one more. But if all the ladies in the house can please stand. All of those watching on YouTube, please stand. If you're driving, keep your seatbelt on, but repeat after us. Ladies, I just want you to say, I am, I am sufficient, sufficient, acceptable, acceptable and, complete. and complete. Brothers, you got to give God a hand clap of praise right there. Now, you may be seated right there, ladies. This is what Mandy teaches in her books. And she says after years, y'all, uh, when she, she was trying to prove herself in the eyes of somebody else, even coming alongside Oprah Winfrey on the Oprah show, even touring with Oprah as she went around the world. Mandy says, y'all, as a New York Times best-selling author, she hit rock bottom. But you see, it turned out that this very rock bottom became the most firm foundation that she ever planted her feet on. And I don't know who I'm talking to this Sunday morning, but every now and then you ought to thank God that you hit rock bottom. Because when you hit rock bottom, you got a place to stand. When you hit rock bottom, you got something to build on. When you hit rock bottom, you got a solid foundation. There is a solid foundation in the word of Almighty God. And God has a way, my friends, of taking us to and and fall to get us where we need to go. Ooh, that was good. Let me say it again. God takes us to and fro to get us where we need to go. The foundation that Mandy talks about, my friends, is a foundation where she wants people to see that through life, though life may not be lighthearted and life may not be all happy and shiny all the time, everybody deserves to be their best self. Everybody deserves to get the best out of life. Everybody deserves to get where God wants them to go. Here's a quote, y'all. Mandy says, God knows what you're ready 
pray for, God knows what, what your arms are able to carry. He knows what your heart can contain. He knows what's coming. He knows what's going. He knows how and when to prepare you. He knows the right time, the right place, the right person, and the right answer. God knows that. And if God knows that, you don't have to worry. Can I help somebody this Sunday morning? You see, the Bible says, I know your beginning and your ending. The Bible says, I'm the author and the finisher of your life. The Bible says, in the beginning, I called you from your mama's room. The Bible says, I'm with you through sick and health. The Bible says, from the beginning of times, I'm always there. If God knows that, the wait, wait a minute, the Bible says he never sleeps, nor he slumbers. And if he ain't going to sleep on me, I shouldn't go to sleep on him. If God watches over me all the time. You see, I like what Mandy says to us because she is really helping us on this day talk about making sure our habits, y'all, are trusted in the power of Almighty God. We have been preaching about habits ever since Lent started, and since Lent ends next week, I figure we'll close out on the habit sermons. Amen. We talked about making love a habit. We're talking about staying committed to your habit. We talked about not to get distracted in your habits. For we recognize, y'all, that successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally successful people. We do consistently what other people would do occasionally. And, and, and Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 through 4, we find Solomon pleading to his sons uh, to remember the teachings and to store their commands in the heart. Why? Because we there we have a payoff. Can you shout payoff? The payoff here it is in verse 2. It says doing so will bring many days a full life and well-being. Doing so will bring many days of full life and a well-being. And I don't think I need to dare ask my friends how many people in church and how many people watching right now would desire many days of full life and well-being. Uh, how many people in church right now and how many people watch it on YouTube and Facebook would feel going to go feel like going to bed feeling good and feeling better when you wake up? How many people would desire to live your best life now and to leave a legacy behind for others to follow? I, I, I think if, if that is your question, I'm about ready to give you your answer. You can go ahead and shout right there because the Bible says if you want to live your best life, you've got to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct your path. My friends, this is one of the greatest promises that you will ever find in God's holy word. And it comes written to us by King Solomon himself, often called the wisest man that ever lived. Solomon understood, y'all, that there is a cause and effect relationship between the promises of God and the fulfillment of those same promises. He knew that, that, that with almost every promise, there is a condition attached to it. He also knew something of the conflict between the known and the unknown, the trusting of God for what you cannot see. And I think I can see somebody this morning who says, Reverend, that's my testimony. I have trusted God for things I could not see. Reverend, that's my testimony. I've walked into places I should not have walked in, but God said, go. Reverend, that's my testimony. I've left some places that were hard for me to leave, but I've embraced some places where God says, I want you to go. That's my testimony because the Bible says is that, that God knows what we're going through. Okay, if God knows what we're going through, God understands the conflict between the known and the unknown, we still got to trust God. And I don't want you to run too past that, too fast past that statement because you see, in the words of the late Reverend Dr. Fred Sampson, just because you can't trace him does not mean you cannot trust him. 
just, just because you can't call dot, dot the dots, cross the T's, and, and say, well, this is where God is moving, that doesn't mean God is not moving. You just have to show up and watch God show out. You see, many Christians say they trust God to get them to heaven. But when you see how they're living the life right now, they don't even trust God to get them from Sunday to Monday. Uh, many folk will talk about how God will make a way out of your life, but God ain't doing nothing in their life. The Lord knows how to deliver. The Lord knows how to break strongholds. The Lord knows how to give a new life. The Lord knows how to be a faithfulness and loyalty in your spirit. And you've got to give it all to the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6, it contains one of the most beloved, quoted, and memorized passages in the Bible. It's a reminder, my friends, that the knowledge of who God is should make you willing to trust him. If you know who God is, you ought to trust God because you know who God is. And I might go ahead and say that might be our problem right there. That we don't trust God because we don't know God. I'm not talking about you, but you got some relatives that live in South Carolina right now that would trust the lottery. Is this test, test? Okay, okay. You got some relatives in Virginia right now who would trust other things like the government. But I guarantee you that the government comes and go. You ain't going to win the lottery. Let me just go ahead and say that right now. But you can trust Almighty God. You can trust. Let me see if I can help him understand. Brother Lonzo, the Hebrew word for trust, the Hebrew word for trust means to lie down, to put your entire weight on something. It means to go to sleep at night knowing that the bed you sleep in, that sealy plastic pelic or whatever that mattress you got, it will hold your body weight. You don't go to the mattress and just take your measurement out and do a pound test to see if it's going to hold you. You just pop yourself down and you rest and you wake up in the morning. You trust that mattress to hold. Matter of fact, everybody who came to church in person right there, nobody brought a, a measuring system to see if that pew you would hold you. And I'm sure if you're like me, you didn't get COVID-19, but you got COVID-39. And right now, somebody know. Somebody know that that pew is a lot stronger this time of year than it was two years ago. Can I get an amen right there? I'm just having some fun with you, but I want you to get the point about what trusting is. Trusting means that I will step forward. Trusting means that, 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 that trust does not come from the head, but it's from the heart. It, it is not a result of reasoning, but a result of believing. You've got to believe, my friend. It, it, it's, it's not about what I feel, it's what I believe. It, and you see, when you look at the Bible, uh, we are blessed when we trust, but we are cursed when we don't. Abraham believed God. It was counted unto him for righteousness, the Bible says. But when Abraham leaned on his own understanding, he fell miserably. According to his understanding, God could not provide for him in the faith. But God gave him food and God gave him water. According to his understanding, God could not give him a son to Sarah and himself when they got older than what old people supposed to be having babies. But somehow, some way, God gave them a child. According to his understanding, God could not give him the ram in the bush. But the Bible says on the mountain where he was about ready to sacrifice, God put a ram in the bush. And that right there is something by this testimony. When I don't lean to my own understanding, God has a ram in the bush. When I don't lean to what I think it should be, God has a ram in the bush. When I let go of my stinking thinking and let God take control of my life, God makes a way out of no way. Am I preaching harder than you responding? Because somebody's testimony right there. He is bread when I'm hungry. He's water when I'm thirsty. He's a bridge over my troubled water. He's my doctor in my sick room. He's my lawyer in my courtroom. He's my sheriff when I need somebody to advocate for me. He's my city councilman when I need somebody to come and do city council work. Whatever, whatever I need, God will supply. Yeah. 
the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says, trust, 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 trust in the Lord. Trust is, 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 is an all or nothing kind of proposal, y'all. You got to trust God with everything. You can't halfway trust God. Okay, let me see if I can say it like this. You can't be halfway trusting like you be halfway pregnant. I don't want to get in trouble with nobody. Yeah, that's what that is. That's the dictionary says that trust means assurance, reliance, and confidence. But the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, which means entirely without exception, confidence in the Lord. God says, trust me completely. You see, see, God says, I can sustain you because partial trust is no trust at all. Either God is trustworthy or he is not. If he cannot be trusted with all, he cannot be trusted at all. If you can't trust God with all, no need to try to trust God with a little bit. you got to trust God. Come, Be Partial trust, my friends, is not trust at all. Oh, you see, when you talk about trusting God with your habits, you've got to recognize what is a habit. A habit is an acquired behavior pattern regularly followed until it has become almost involuntary. An acquired behavior pattern regularly followed until it becomes almost involuntary. The Hebrew word for trust is a picture of a little child, a little child who is learning how to walk. And I got to talk to some mamas and daddies and grandpas and grandmas and aunts and uncles because you know when Pookie and Skeeter was learning to walk, what did we say? Come on. I won't let you fall. C -c -c come on, come on. I, I got you. And they would, they would take that staggering step and, and then they would pop down on the bottom. And they'd get back, get back up again, baby. And then they would take another staggering step and they would pop down and, and then they'd go crawling all over the place. And we knew that they were too big to be crawling. What, too heavy to be picking up. Somebody say amen. But what do we do as parents? We, we intentionally encourage and coach them back up. Come on, you can do it. Come, and we extended our arms. A Hebrew word for trust means that God is extending God's hands and God's arms. And every time you fall, God says, get back up. Every time you stumble, God says, I got you. Every time you want to go back to crawling again, God says, no need you to crawl. I need my people who are called by my name to humble themselves and to pray and it's time to get to stepping. It's time to start walking in the way God wants you to walk. It's time to start living the way God wants you to live. It's time to start doing what God calls you to do. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. When you give your habits to the Lord, it, it, it is understanding that, that your habits are committed to God because you trust God with your habits. And whatever it is you started in Lent, I pray that you will trust God, not that you stop next Saturday going into Holy Week, that you stop doing what you said you were going to do. Because, I mean, let's just be honest. Some of y'all can't wait to eat some more chocolate. Because you gave up sugar for lint. Amen. Amen, lights. Amen, lights. Some of y'all can't wait to get back on Facebook because you gave up Facebook for lint. So some, some of y'all said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not going to eat potato chips, not going to eat french fries, not going to eat red meat. And you already got your mouth is salivating right now for a greasy burger someplace. Somebody say amen. But if God brought you through those, 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 those weeks of Lent, I believe God can take you through your next season in life. If you can do without chocolate and Facebook and you're still living, you can do without talking on the phone and you're still living, you can do your very best and God still has you. You see, understand, Aristotle said it like this, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act but a habit. 
It's the habits that you have that, that I believe God wants us to put into action. I said it before. It's not what we do in 2022. It's who we become. I want to become a stronger witness. I want to become a more viable citizen. I, I want to become a, a person that's not living in debt. I want to become a person who's a giver and not a spender. I want to become somebody who is loving and not criticizing. I want to become somebody who's finding favor, not finding fault. I want to become somebody when I walk into the room, somebody says, I'm glad you're here. Instead of saying, Lord, have mercy. I want to become, and, and y'all, let's don't do, let's become what God wants us to become. How do you do that? You got to learn, you got to lean, you got to learn, and you got to lead. Just those three words right there, and we'll be out of here. You got to trust God with your habit by leaning, by learning, and by leaving. Just those three words when I say when you have to lean, why do you lean to the Lord? Well, because you are leaning for guidance. You're leaning that God will guide you in a way that only God can direct you. You're leaning because leaning gives you some help. Uh, and you see, because we are sinners saved by grace, we need God's help in our life. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, because we know we can't make it on our own. We need somebody to help us along the way. Somebody prayed for me, had me on the mind. Somebody called me out in prayer, had me on the mind. My preacher prayed for me. My mama prayed for me. My daddy prayed for me. My uncles prayed for me. My coach prayed for me. My sponsor prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. I can't make it on my own. I lean to the Lord. I lean because leaning gives me strength. Uh, yeah, it's not that I need more muscle mass, but I need some strength. It's not that I want to be all bulky, but I need some strength. Strength to do what? When the devil tries to attack me, I need to have the strength of the word to fight him back. When the devil tries to tear my family apart, I need to have the strength of Almighty God to rebuild my family back. When I lean to the Lord, I'm leaning because I'm trusting in his word. You see, you've got to understand, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. That's the word by James Clear. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. If you got a system, that system will not make you fail. See if I can say it like this. Brothers, would you recognize, recognize that everybody that went to the big dance, their goal was to get to the big dance. But right now we got two teams left that had a system to win the championship. Okay, you didn't get it. Everybody had a goal to get to the championship. The goal was to be one of 64 teams, even to be in the play-in game. But the system, the system is the thing that takes them to the championship. Okay, you didn't get it. You see, oftentimes we got a goal that we want to get married, but we don't have a system to keep us married. Okay, you didn't get it. We have a goal. We want to have children, but we don't have a system to raise our children. Okay, okay, you didn't get it. We have a goal to make money, but we don't have a system, okay, to keep money. And what, the, what, what, what James Clear says and what the Bible says is that God will order your steps. God will direct your path. God will help you put things in place. And when you have a system, again, successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. You, you've got to lean, but then you've got to learn. Le learning means you've got to transform your mind. Paul says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Trusting in the Lord means I got to transform my mind, transform my thinking. I'm going to lean not to my own understanding. I'm going to acknowledge him. I, I'm going to recognize that God being God, oh, by God's self, God got this thing. God knows the end. God knows the beginning. I don't have to try to rewrite the Bible. Just read the Bible. Matter of fact, after I read the Bible, I got to apply the Bible. Okay, I'm going to lean, I'm going to learn, but here's the last part. I've got to leave. Can you shout leave? 
You see, here's what the Bible says. The Bible tells us, we didn't read it, in, in verse 7 it says, but do, but do not wise, in, but be, be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Be not wise in our own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. First of all, we need to leave behind our own wisdom. Okay, you are not the most smartest. That ain't right. Okay. You got the point. You are not the most intelligent person always in the room. There's somebody that can teach you something. Matter of fact, the person beside you can teach you something. So instead of asking them what you can learn from them, just smile and say thank you. Now, if they didn't say thank you, that person thinks they know more than you do, and that ain't the truth. God always places us in spaces where we can impart on somebody else. You've got to leave your own with let, let, the, let us leave behind the world's wisdom in favor of God. Here's your tweet for the week right here, my friends. You've got to focus on the major and not on the minor. Here's your tweet. Don't let your mouth overload your back. <laughs> Don't be so heavy. You're not all that. If you don't believe it, just keep on. Somebody will remind you you ain't all that. Come on, say it with me. Don't let your mouth Overload your back. Here it is. Second thing, second thing, second thing. I am to depart from evil. If it's wrong, I'm to leave it behind. If it's questionable, I'm to leave it behind. If it's carnal, I'm going to leave it behind. You see, here's what we learn in, in habits, y'all. Obstacles can make you obsessed with the opposite side of opportunities. If you look for the trouble, you're going to find trouble. But when you take your habits to God, God shows you opportunities. If you look for death, you will find death. If you look for life, you will find life in a dead situation. If you look for recovery, when you are trying to recover, I guarantee you God has a way of putting people and put you in the right place where recovery is within your grasp. If you look for a new start the way God wants you to start, God has a way of putting you in the place and the space to start all over again. See if I can close. I want to share the story. I share the story of, of the lifeguard. Don't know if you remember me talking about this, but there was Mr. the nice, lifeguard who found himself called from his perch chair one day to jump out the chair and to jump into the water to save a man who was drowning. And as he approached the man, he saw the man fighting profusely against the water. He was swinging his arms. He was kicking his feet because he was drowning. And the lifeguard recognized the situation situation, my friends, he recognized that this man was trying to save himself. He was drowning, but he was trying to save himself. The lifeguard's job was to jump out of his chair and to save those that were struggling. And because he had come out of his chair to jump in the water because the man was fighting himself, the lifeguard knew, first of all, is that if he tried to save the man while he was trying to save himself, he would not be successful. He assessed the situation and realized that the man was larger than he was, which meant is that the man had more going on than he was able to handle at that time. But as the man continued to struggle, Dr. Monroe, fighting the water and kicking and screaming, the man tired out. As he tired out, that's when the lifeguard stepped a little bit closer. He stepped closer, y'all, because the man realized that, that, that I'm about ready to drown, about ready to give up. And at that moment, the lifeguard came up behind the man, put his arms around him, put, lifted his chin above the water, and he put the man against his back, and he began to side stroke to the shore. You're missing it right there. 
the man, y'all, was about ready to kill himself and the lifeguard if the lifeguard would have jumped in at the time when the man was trying to save himself. It was only when the man says, I can't do it no longer. I cannot keep going like I'm going. I can't keep fighting like I'm fighting. I can't keep warning like I'm running. It was when he gave up that the lifeguard stepped in. Now, you know where I'm going right there. The lifeguard is not somebody with some shorts on, not somebody with a whistle. I'm talking about Jesus Christ himself, our Savior and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ himself, who brings life in the dead situations. Jesus Christ himself, who has a ray of redeeming and reviving. Jesus Christ himself, he came down from heaven off that perch to save people like you and me. And as long as we keep flapping our hands, as long as we keep swinging our arms, as long as we keep kicking back against the God, God cannot save us. But when we let go and let God, we say, God, I need you to take care of this situation. God, I need you to come into my life. God, I need you to work in my relationship. God, I need you to help me be a better daddy. God, help me be a more concerned mama. God, help me be more loving grandparent. Whatever you need when you say, God, I ain't going to fight it no longer. I want you to be like that life, God. God's going to come around with his loving arm and lift your head up and remind you that God made you and God keeps you and God delivers you and God heals you and God transforms you and God revives you and God restores you and God can give you everything that you need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He, he, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they cover me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with all my cup. message. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you didn't get a chance to, like this video, comment something that touched you, and share it with a friend. If you'd like to stay connected with us, you can visit our website, Facebook page, even follow us on Instagram at C and Jenkins Church. Lastly, if you'd like to give to our ministry, we invite you to visit our website, Givelify, text to give or even join us here at the church. We're here again next Sunday, so we hope you tune in. Thank you and have a great week. Greeting, but we thank y'all so much for being here. Hear this word of benediction. God loves you. We love you. If you're looking for a place to grow in the Lord, this is a good place. If you never made a commitment to follow God, we invite you to follow Jesus. I love you. Would love to be your pastor, but more importantly, I want to make sure that you know Jesus as your Savior. And so if you want to talk to somebody after the service, we invite you to do so. But we want to pray God's spirit in your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May heaven shine upon you. May God give you his grace and his peace this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, let the church say amen. amen. Go in peace. Have a wonderful day.